Welcome back, you watch your morning live. Now, Paula Grubin's Umbilicus, an autobiographical novel, is bittersweet. A well-crafted read that looks at the issue of adoption and how people deal with it. The author's sensitivity to the issue doesn't take a position, but merely tries to show how lives are affected. She joins me in the studio. Uh, Paula, thank you very much for joining me. Thanks for having me, Sam. Yeah, and you know when you start off on the jacket of the book and you say it's an autobiographical work, it's, a, it's about this girl called Charlotte who um, grew up in this existence but there was always something holistically missing about her and then she goes on this mission to find her but she's always known that she, she was adopted. Yeah, that's true. Um, the book is based on my story as an adoptee mm. um, and it focuses on the, on the period in my life when I go in search of my mm. biological family. Um, and yes, although Charlotte, I don't claim to speak on behalf of all adoptees mm. because a lot of them don't want to go and search. Um, but for her, it was, it was always this, this hole in her soul that she, mm. she needed to fill. Um, and the only reason she, the only way she could do that was through meeting her birth mom and her birth dad. It's so interesting that you mentioned that for, for Charlotte this was a mission and for a lot of other people they don't want to know because Charlotte's half-brother, well, adopt, well, adopted brother, mm. um, doesn't want to know his biological parents and he's quite content Correct. To, to live that life. But also in some weird and interesting way, which is neither right nor wrong, feels that it would be a, a disservice to his adopted parents to know his background. There um, is no right yeah. and wrong here. There's not. And a lot of adoptive children do feel disloyal to their parents. That's one of the reasons I did this whole process on my own. Um, when you're 18, you are legally allowed to search for your biological parents with your adoptive parents' consent. I decided to wait until I was 21 and do it completely on my own. Um, it's a very personal thing. Um, and, yeah, I didn't want to hurt them. Mm. So... And, and then, you know, there's this interesting about, about Charlotte. Charlotte and Beth, they finally meet. They have this, obviously, this, uh, this relationship thing that has always existed there. Uh, the fact that um, Charlotte then discovers that Beth has actually been part of her life for, uh, for longer than, than, than I must admit is comfortable. She's known about her for four or five years, maybe. Correct. She's met her through friends. She's even worked with uh, Charlotte's adoptive uh, father. Correct. And... And the way you deal with it, you're so sensitive about it. I think I would have been angry. Like, personally, it would have made, it would have, you know, for lack of a better description, it would have pissed me off. Really? Yeah. Um, the fact that she... I know she, that she couldn't approach you because... She couldn't. Yeah. Legally, she wasn't, she wasn't allowed, allowed to. to. And thank God she didn't. Um, she waited for me to initiate contact, yeah. which was the right thing to do. But yeah, it was kind of weird to find out that, that she had known about everybody in me. your life was connected to so many people your biological knew. parents. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Durban's a small community. This is where the story is set. Yeah, yeah. And a lot of people know a lot of people within the same community. So mm -hmm. yeah, it's very intertwined. Why change the names uh, in your book and not just write an aut a straight out autobiography? Um, marketing. Uh, okay. I, was, I was told that fiction sells better, especially okay. in the young adult realistic fiction market. Okay. Memoir is read more by the older generation. Yeah. Um, I wanted to target specifically adolescents, especially when they're going through very sort of troubled times. Yeah finding their identity um, during the teenage years. So I just, the story is 100% my own. I just changed the names. The, the other thing that's interesting to me and, and one of the observations I picked up in the book is that as you're reflecting back with your biological mother, Beth, uh, Charlotte and Beth are sitting there and you're talking about the things, the issues that affected Charlotte as a character, as uh, growing up, the missing bits, uh, the eventual research that you had to do to kind of piece it together mm. because there wasn't adequate information Correct. even about adoptions or how to deal with adoptees. One of the stories that, that's recounted it is when your, uh, by, uh, your adoptive parents try and send you to a counsellor mm. who has no clue on how to deal with this particular issue. But that is a societal problem, isn't it? Absolutely. People do not understand that the, the issues affecting teenage adoptees are unique to teenage adoptees. Um, Yes, a lot of teens are troubled, but when there is this huge piece of your puzzle missing as far as your identity goes, um, it, it compounds all those other issues. And for me, it manifested in a lot of self-destructive behavior. Mm. Um, 
So I do think it's, it's an advice I give all adoptive parents is please find someone who specializes mm. in adoption um, for your kids to Because we are in to. Adoption Month, by the way, Correct. for those that don't know. Adoption Awareness Month mm, yeah. and World Adoption Day is on the 15th of November. Um, and well, we need to share our stories. We need to um, communicate and, and open dialogue with one another because mm. there's, there's a lot of sig- a s- stigma and secrecy and shame around it, mm. and it shouldn't be like that. We need to talk more openly. And we do talk, I know we've run out of time, but we do talk about the nature and nurture issue. But there's one thing that you, you did get from your adoptive parents was your love for reading, the yes, love for books, the, the, the relationship that you, that you have with your adoptive mom was so natural that you could articulate it to your biological mother. Exactly. Um, my adoptive mom, who I call mom, she is my mm. mom, she instilled the love of reading f- for me, and it's the reason I became a writer, to tell you the truth. So, yeah, nature versus nurture, it's a very difficult debate. Okay, well, in studio with us is Paula Grubin with the book Umbilicus. It's available everywhere, right? Um, online, yeah. Have a look at my website, paulagrubin.com, and it's got links to everywhere where it's available. Wow, it's a real inspirational read. Uh, I, must, I must commend you. It was written with incredible sensitivity. Go and get the book. I guarantee you it's going to spark some kind of conversation. And if you've adopted a child or you're an adoptee, this is maybe something that you want to discuss around the dinner table and maybe also orientate your community around you on how to deal with this issue because it's not only a family issue. We take an ad break. Don't get it.